Hello, my friends, and welcome to our channel today. We love you all and thank all of you for your comments and for your prayers for us here. We are praying for all our brothers and sisters, praying for that lost soul to come to Jesus, and all glory and praise to God. So very much is happening right now. So many news items to look at in the light of Bible prophecy. In this video, I want to look at three news stories as we see the rising Antichrist Donald Trump coming into power and immediately pushing the envelope, pushing to the very limits of presidential powers, even as we know the time is coming when Trump will go well beyond the legal limits of the law and thumb his nose at all restraints, all checks and balances on his power as he moves toward total autocracy, total dictatorship. Just yesterday, Monday, November the 18th, Trump has already signaled via Truth Social, his social media platform, that he will be declaring a national emergency in order to be able to call in the military to begin laying hands on immigrants that they will claim to have entered the U.S. without following the legal process, as we know many have. Here's a quote from one news story. President-elect Trump confirmed Monday he will declare a national emergency to deport migrants using the U.S. military to enforce a mass deportation. Although U.S. military personnel are already at the U.S. southern border now, they are not allowed to lay hands on anyone, being restrained by the U.S. Constitution, which forbids the use of the military for domestic law enforcement. However, once Trump declares a national emergency using whatever excuse, the U.S. military can then be used legally to lay hands on people deemed to be in the U.S. unlawfully. No doubt this mass deportation will begin as they boast, removing many migrants who have committed crimes in the U.S. and are likely unwelcome even in their nation of origin. But the next step will be to go after everyone considered criminal because they crossed the border without following the legal process. This could include many migrants who escaped persecutions in their homeland and also migrants who crossed the border to reunite themselves with families that are already in the United States legally. And we are not talking only about deportation. The Trump team is already preparing many detention centers, lining up resources now to incarcerate large numbers of people. The Trump team is already messaging local law enforcement agencies across the country to be ready to help the feds in locking up people in county jails. So a Trump-declared national emergency is coming soon, and God only knows what other measures that will bring with it. Meanwhile, Trump is already prepared to install his governing loyalist appointees into power using his power of making recess appointments, which will circumvent the checks and balances on his absolute power. For those of you who are following this, you may know the U.S. Constitution proposes that presidential cabinet positions such as Attorney General, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, etc., etc., they are first to be nominated by the incoming president and then to be examined and confirmed or rejected by the U.S. Senate. However, the U.S. Senate's part in the process can be circumvented if the Congress is in recess. Many U.S. presidents have made recess appointments in the past, but no incoming president 
has ever begun his administration by overtly thumbing his nose at Congress from the very start. And yet Trump is laying the groundwork now to install his controversial cabinet picks without the consent of the Senate. Before the confirmation of John Thune as Senate Majority Leader, Trump had sent out a tweet demanding, quote, any Republican senator seeking the coveted leadership position in the United States Senate must agree to recess appointments. All three senators running in the secret ballot election quickly signaled support for the idea, including John Thune, who won the election for Senate Majority Leader. Democrats would not be able to block the recess because Trump could force Congress into adjournment through a constitutional process. Trump could get the House of Representatives to propose an adjournment, and if the Senate did not go along, Trump could constitutionally intervene and adjourn Congress himself. Then he would be able to install all his cabinet picks without any check on his absolute power. And that is what Trump and his team are already planning. And this is in the event that enough Republican senators actually tried to block any of Trump's nominations. So anyone who thinks Matt Gates or anyone else is in doubt to be installed in the Trump regime, Trump has a pathway to have his way. And woe to any of his GOP minions who try to oppose this rising Antichrist dictator Trump. Trump will continue to ruthlessly destroy anyone in his GOP who opposes his will and or any opposition from the discombobulated Democrats, anyone who gets in his way. But even so, Trump is now signaling to his opposition that he is forgiving to anyone who will seek his forgiveness. Trump loves to see former critics come crawling back to him, looking for his favor, and then he elevates them, he rewards them, like he did J.D. Vance and Marco Rubio, etc. Trump loves those who will compromise their principles and bend the knee and come to him and kiss his ring. As you know, it was revealed yesterday that Joe Scarborough of MSNBC's Morning Joe had called Trump and asked him if his wife Mika and Joe himself could meet with Trump at Mar-a-Lago. That meeting took place this past weekend, a meeting which Trump described as extremely cordial. Joe and Mika, of course, have been Trump's fiercest critics for years. Day after day, the subject on Morning Joe has endlessly been Donald Trump and his threat to democracy, his corruption, his lies, and how Trump is totally untrustworthy, vile, and all about himself. But now, after Trump's election, Joe Scarborough has called Trump on the phone and asked Trump if he and Mika could meet with Trump. And so they did. There is no recorded interview. It wasn't business. It was just a private conversation. Quoting Trump, many things were discussed, and I very much appreciated the fact that they wanted to have open communication. It's too bad that it wasn't done long ago. Mika said of the meeting, quote, in this meeting, President Trump was cheerful. He was upbeat. He seemed interested in finding common ground with Democrats on some of the most divisive issues. Joe Scarborough said this, quote, a lot of Democratic leaders we have talked to since the election have told Mika and me it's time for a new approach. And when I say top Democrats, I mean top Democrats. Trump told Fox News that he thinks similar meetings, quote, will take place with others in the news media, even those that have been extremely hostile. The media is very important to the long-term success of the United States of America. And here's 
how you can translate that. The news media needs to come around and get on board with my future. I'm the only leader that matters. Follow me, and then we can work together. Those of you who follow this channel know that I have warned you, as Trump grows in power over this earth, people will begin to bow the knee and kiss his ring and come around to the reality that Trump is the rising God of this world. Jesus said, families will be divided, three against two and two against three. And that is what we see with Donald Trump and Trumpism. Families divided, friends divided, those who bend the knee to Trump and those who strongly oppose him. In the closing sentences from the book of Daniel, the closing sentences that the Lord gives us from the mouth of the prophet Daniel, the prophet talks about a vile person who has not been given the honor of royalty, whose heart will be set against the holy covenant. And of course, that holy covenant is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the new covenant between God and the redeemed of God. It is the good news of forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Antichrist will vent his fury against that holy covenant, the Bible says. Why? Because the Antichrist wants all worship directed to him. He wants all the worship and all the glory and all the praise and honor. And he will show favor to those who forsake the holy covenant. He will desecrate the rebuilt temple, and he will abolish the religious rituals carried out there, and he will commit the abomination of desolation. He will enter into that third temple and show himself that he is God, and he will corrupt those who violate the holy covenant. But the people who know their God will firmly resist him. The prophet Daniel writes in his book, that those who are wise will instruct many. Many will fall by the sword or be burned or captured or plundered. And when they fall, they will receive a little help. Many who are not sincere will join with them. Even among the wise, some will stumble so that they may be refined, purified and made spotless until the time of the end, for it will still come at the appointed time. The vile Antichrist will be given a crown. We read in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Again, Daniel writes that as a king, he will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god and say unheard of things against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been determined must take place. All the Bible prophecies must be fulfilled. Everything written in the Word of God must come to pass. He will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or for the God desired by women, nor will he regard any God, but he will exalt himself above them all. Instead of them, he will honor a god of forces, the god of fortresses, Satan. The god of this world he will honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He will attack the world's mightiest fortresses with the help of Satan and will greatly honor those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people. In the end, he will come to his end and no one will help him. This will be a time of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until now. But everyone whose name is found written in the book of life will be saved forever. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. Daniel writes that many will be purified, made spotless, and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. 
What about you? Do you understand? Are you listening to the words of God? Are you ready for these last days? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Are you drawing nearer to the Lord in prayer and devotion day by day? Are you listening to the Word of God by reading your Bible day by day? Are you spreading the good news that Jesus saves? Are you speaking to your brothers and sisters in love and encouraging them, upbuilding them, and being the an example to them of God's grace? Let's persevere. Let's not be discouraged. We are called to let our light shine and to lead many to the Lord. 